Hello people of YouTube. This is part five of my layout videos. Um I do have a locomotive review. Um I've been having this locomotive for a long while. She's beat up, you know, but she she still runs good. Um I had this one whenever I was a little bit younger and dumber. So you know I made modifications to her and shit like that. Um excuse the language, sorry. That slipped out. kids don't curse especially not in front of your parents you just don't curse at all period um anyway um and if you didn't watch part four like if you didn't watch the whole video of part four i'll say this now guys some of you have been leaving really nice kind-hearted comments on my videos that i upload and i really want to reply to you but for some reason I can't reply to you guys on videos that I upload. Um, cut. I mean, I use my iPhone 6s Plus to upload my videos and make my videos, and you know, watch other people's videos and comment on other people's videos. And you and it. So uh, it's hard to explain, but I'm able to comment on other people's videos that other people have uploaded. But when it comes to replying to you guys on. Com to comments that you guys leave on my videos for some reason I can't like um and of course I'm pretty sure some of you Apple iPhone users will know that the operating system is iOS and um I use the YouTube app I don't type in you I don't go on to youtube.com on the Safari app. Um, I use I go straight to the U I go to YouTube using the YouTube app, and you know iOS all that kind of stuff yada yada. And like whenever you first open the, you know the YouTube app, you have like you know at the bottom there's like the home button, the subscriptions button, the activity button, you know trending button, and all that kind of stuff. And whenever you guys leave a comment, I get a notification on the activity button. I click on the activity button, and I click on your comment to try to reply to it. Now, whenever I click on the video that you guys have commented on, the video that I've uploaded, the, the one that, that, the video that I have uploaded and you guys commented on it, I click on it um, to try to reply to you guys on that video. I go down to the comment section of the video um, while the video is playing, you know, yada, yada, yada. And, um, you know, you guys' comments don't show up in the comment section, but I can leave a comment on my own video and that'll show up. But for some reason, you guys' comments don't want to show up on videos that I upload. I mean, I can read your comments through the, whenever I click on them, um, or like whenever I click on the activity button and, you know, you know, and I read your comment, but for some reason I can't reply to it. I've tried. If someone could please leave me a really long, detailed, descriptive comment on how I can go about replying to you guys, um, ah. If you could just leave a really long, descriptive, um, detailed comment on how I go about replying to your guys' comments um, on videos that I upload whenever I'm using the YouTube app on my iPhone 6S Plus, it would be greatly appreciated. And if I do reply to you, that means it worked. If I don't, then that means something went wrong or something y'all told me was invalid, which I'm not going to be mad or anything like that. You know, people make mistakes. That's that's part of being human, you know. Um, but yeah. You know, I would just greatly appreciate it. I really would. Because I really want to reply to you guys, you know. So please don't think I'm being rude. Especially the ones who are watching this video that have watched my videos in the past and I'm and I still haven't replied to you guys yet. I'm not being rude. I just can't figure out how to reply. 
So, anyway, without further ado, I have a locomotive review today. Um, and I may do a go into a little bit of detail of my layout. Um, no, I still have not put light um, batteries in some of the lights that I had on my layout from the last video. I haven't had time yet. Um, because I've been busy. And, um, you know, and I still have not been able to get my, um, yellow distance signal to work. Um, because, uh, again, I just haven't had time. Because I've been working for the past couple of days. Today's, um, no wait, I worked yesterday and then I'm off today and then I was also off Tuesday, so what the heck. Anyway, um, well, I was off Tuesday that just passed and then I worked yesterday and then I'm off again today. Ugh. Anyway, but yeah, um, again, I have a locomotive review, and it is of the Hornby Railroad BR9F. God, the lighting is horrible in here, man. What is wrong? Jesus. Anyway, um, again, Hornby Railroad model of the BR9F. Um, love these models. I love the 9Fs. They're such great locomotives. Hold on, let me, uh, raise this up a little bit. Try to see if I can get more lighting. Okay. Anyway. Yeah, but this is the model. Um, I love it. Love it to death. Let's go ahead and open the box. And this is one of the models that I really don't care about the paint. Um, because, I mean, it's in... British Rail Black Livery. I mean, so, you know, I mean, it's like... <laughs> and it's like... Almost like a flat black. I mean, there's a few marks on the tender, you know. But, I mean, that, that could just easily be wiped up. Um. Anyway. Let's have a look at the tender first. Um, let me look at the back. Uh, yada, yada, yada. English, this product is not suitable for children. Okay, whatever. Um, again, the box... You know, yada yada. Um, I think bought on eBay either secondhand or not secondhand. I can't remember. Um, but anyway, let's look at the tender first. Um, and this tender I have cut out the fake colo to put real coal, as you can tell. Cut all that out. Um, and I also put a hole in here, you know, like for the water spouts, you know, like. You know the water tank to be able to put water into the tender put water in the tender um typical of hornby with the railroad models the big huge bulky hook and loop coupling um and yes there is a center wheel missing um uh, man why is the lighting so horrible today jesus um but you know and then again it is a black model so it's not gonna show well up on camera um Anyway, just sorry about the horrible lighting, guys. Um, you know, let's look at the tender. You know, nice little detail for the, you know, the axle boxes and the leaf suspension, all that kind of stuff. Um, the tender in this locomotive does have contacts. Um, you know. So, yeah. Uh, typical Hornby sprung buffers. Yeah. Gotta love this. Um, anyway... But yeah, I mean, it's a... The tender has some alright weight to it. I mean, it's okay. I mean, it's enough weight to keep it from, uh... You know... Coming off the rail, should I say. In certain situations. You know, I mean, you got the rivets. You got the British rail crest. I can't remember if that's the early or late crest. I can't remember. But um, if my camera can focus, there you go. See the detail. Um, you know, rivets. This would make rivet counters happy. Um, no brake piping, weirdly enough. Um, then again, it is a railroad model. I'm not expecting it. Um, but then again, I have seen other people's videos of Hornby railroad models with the brake piping. So that's weird. Um, but I, 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 um, myself painted this. You know, painted all the little detail on here. Um, what the heck is that? Hmm. Weird. This little 
smudge right here. Weird. Anyway, um, I mean, there's not much to talk about when it comes to the tender. Um, right here is the where the uh, and you know if you can see this wire right here, you know, it's a little wire, the little black wire right here. Hold on, let me get something to be able to point stuff out easier. Whoa. Give me a second, guys. Let me grab what I grabbed last time for the other video. Oh. Okay. If you can see this black wire right here, this is uh, the wire they use to, you know, transfer the current from the con from the wheels, you know, from the contacts and all that um, through here and uh, up to this little metal plate. And uh, if I'm not mistaken, is that metal? No, I think this piece right here is plastic. This uh, this bar right here where the locomotive hooks up to. Um, yeah, it's a nice, nice tender. I mean, not too too much to look at. Um, still cool though. And of course, you got your little guide rails. You know, all right here. It's little guide rails. On both sides. Whoop, the ladder. You know. They do put some detail in it, but this is one of the Hornby's older models, so, you know, I'm not really expecting much. But it was a nice touch to, you know, put all the rivets on here and, you know, still put the ladder and all that kind of stuff. All the rivets and sprung buffers. It would have been nice if they would have put a slimline tension lock coupling, but, I mean, hey, what you gonna do? You know, what you gonna do? Um, next is the Loco. And, of course, the BR9F. Um, one of... I think it's one of the most powerful... Um, class of locomotives. Because the 9 stands for the power. And then the F stands for the type of... You know, like... What cla like what type of... Rolling stock it pulls. Which 9F stands for power class 9. Then freight. And now, the 9Fs proved themselves so good with, you know, pulling freight trains, really long freight trains. And they proved themselves kind of speedy, too. They proved themselves to be pretty fast. Um, they started using them for a lot of passenger services as well. Um, man, just look at all that linkage. And um, if you're wondering, for some of you viewers who don't know much about the 9F... This wheel right here is, well, at least on the model, it has no flange. Like, you see right here, it has this, the flange right here, this part right here, this little shiny silver part that I'm covering, that flange. This one has no flange. Um, that way it can take, you know, sharper radius curves. Um, and if you're wondering what all this down here is, this is like the contacts that transfer um, from that little silver plating on the tender. Um, those little contacts transfer the power, um, like, it takes the power from the tender and it, um, distributes it to the motor of the locomotive, to the little five-pole motor. And let me tell you, this locomotive right here is so fast, whenever I put it full blast on my layout, it is so quick, it'll literally take a curve and fly off the tracks. I mean, it is just that quick. The five-pole motor is ridiculous, and it's a very good motor, too. But yeah, the silver plating right here, and it also draws up the current through here as well, if I'm not mistaken. Or, And if that's not the case, the silver plating draws the current, you know, from the wheels and everything like that through the contacts. It collects the current, um, and it shoves it through this metal bar, and um, once that happens, basically... These two pieces right here, this piece, this brass piece, and this brass piece, or copper piece, I'm thinking it's most likely copper, um, transfers that through wires into the locomotive, which long time ago, whenever I first got it, this started messing up on me, and I had to resolder everything, and then just one day I said, ah, oh, you know what, screw it. The locomotive has what, one, two, three, four wheels um, that collect current because the center wheel has no flange and everything like that so it doesn't have a contact um and i don't even think it touches the rails to be honest with you when you put it on the tracks 
So why put a contact on on a set of wheels that don't even touch the track? If I'm not mistaken, this thing had and as I was saying, it's like screw it. This thing has four contacts and it has a really long, you know, wheel base. Well, I mean, four contacts on each side, you know, um, one, two, then three, then four. You know what I'm saying? But um, it has a really long wheel base and it has already four good working contacts. So why would I even need the tender anyway? But don't get me wrong, I'm pretty damn sure that the tender is still sending power to all this, but it's just not getting to the motor because the wires are cut. I had to cut them. I had no other choice. It just kept coming apart while it was running. So, you know, I just had to do what I had to do. But, I mean, yeah, this, this model is beautiful. I mean, it really is. I mean, I love the BR Black. I mean, just look at all that linkage, man. I mean, it is just immaculate. I mean, this is just amazing, especially watching all this go around whenever you're running a high-speed train on your layout I mean it is just it's just mesmerizing watching all this just go around and do what it, it's supposed to do you know and it's like it's just such a beautiful model um, this right here is sprung as you can see the spring in here um, it is sprung uh, no front coupler weirdly enough for it being a freight locomotive um, it looks to seem that you can install one because of this prong right here and this prong right here. You can install a couple like they have on the back of the tender. But, um, I mean, you, that involves taking this off and, you know, drilling, you know, a little tap hole just to get the screw started. You know, it'd just be a pain in the butt. And again, sprung buffers right here. Love that feature. Um, really nice handrail going down the side of the locomotive on each side. Even some handrails on the smoke deflectors. Um, double chimney. Um, handrail on here. And whenever I was younger, I actually designed it to do this. If it'll still do it for me. If she will. Nope, not with this. Um, give me a second. Uh, like I told you guys at the beginning of the video, I did some tinkering to the locomotive. Whoop. Uh, d -d 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 uh, let me get a small screwdriver. Go, that'll work. Whoa! Oh, there goes my little pointer. Um, pop this off. Boom. Removed it. You can see inside. I mean, it's just for, you know, the little effect of, you know, you can put like a little man, you know, climbing up and looking all on the inside with a little lantern and checking the piping. Which there's no piping in there it's just you know just the uh because i mean this locomotive is dcc ready as you can see on the box it is dcc ready right there if you see it in the box whoops um but you know i mean yeah um which i may just pop the chip from uh the old chip from mallard and pop the chip in here um, that way this locomotive can run DCC, um, you know, just for the effects of, you know, slow running and, which I mean, this locomotive is already good. I think it's a pretty good slow runner, um, for it being DC, um, pretty fast runner, like I've also said, um, holes for the brake piping, hold on, uh, and another hole probably right here in the dead center for um one of the little fake hooks like as if the, if it would be real life they would take the hook from a a freight car and well we call them co freight cars over here and passenger cars over here in america but in britain they call them freight wagons and passenger coaches um a little you know the little hook for the coupling you know for the little coupling link they would pick it up with a bar and they would drop it onto the coupler right onto the little hook that would be right here um i don't know what happened to the hook or if it even came with it and i don't know what happened to the brake piping if it even came with it um very nice detail um they even included like the little washout plugs right here as you can see the little washout plugs that they use you know they pull them out whenever it's time to service give a really good servicing to the locomotive um safety valves right here and i'm pretty sure this is the whistle um 
And, I mean, she is pretty... I mean, look. It's like, I'm... She just drops pretty much immediately. She's just so heavy. Um, and I did paint the detail in the cab myself. As you can tell. Um, let me get a... You know, a little lighter to show you guys. Oof. And trust me, the lighter is nowhere near close to the locomotive. Nowhere near close. As you can see, I've painted the cab detail. You know, just a little nice touch I decided to do. You know, just something fun to do. Oop. Anyway. Let's see what else. Uh, yeah, I mean, you know, she's pretty. Um, <clears throat> sorry about the voice change right here. Yeah, something stuck in my throat. You know, all this, you know, piping right here. It would have been nice if Hornby would have provided a little, just at least painted this. Because I know some of the, I know this is, most of this piping is supposed to be brass color. I may just paint that. Um, and I may paint the whistle too, I don't know. Um, but this does not open up here, of course. Typical with a Hornby Railroad budget models. Um, but for a budget model, she's a really good model. She runs really well, very fast, very quick. Um, I have usually most of the time, I have her hauling um, passenger and freight. Um, no, and not mixed traffic. Like not a mixed train of passenger and freight, one or the other. But I do have her pull both. She does pull passenger and she does pull freight. Um, you know and. It's like all the detail right here, you know, they put all, they molded all that in, which is still nice of them to do it. You know, it's just still nice of them to do it, you know, a little bar right here on the, you know, the, uh, what you call it. Um, and I used to have some little, um, what you call them, um, uh, ah, Head code lamps. I used to have some little tiny head code lamps, and I would use a little bit of blue tack, and I would, you know, put the blue tack, and then put the little head code lamps. Makes it look a little bit more realistic, um, to an extent, considering that it, you know, it it's blue tack. You know, I mean, come on, how realistic does blue tack look on a model? Not that realistic, but if you use a small enough amount, and you you know place it on the model the right way, and you know place the detail piece you want on there. Um, for temporary, you know, it looks good. Um, and also on eBay, long, long time ago, me and my grandfather, um, we bought like a crud ton of, you know, little paper, he not paper, like they were not, and it was not plastic card as well. It was almost like a peak, the, um, the card, like a modern day photo would go on to. Like you would take a picture of you with your camera, you go to your local, sh um, store, and uh, have them print the uh, pictures out, and it was on that kind of um, that kind of film paper. Um, it had the headboards for the locomotives. Um, it had the headboards that go to the front of the locomotives. You know the name plates that go on the side of the locomotives for the express. Um, you know, and it would have like all the little little plating, little name plates that would go on the side of your coaches. You know, um, I do remember where one of them's at, but I don't feel like going behind my layout and pulling it out because it, it, cause like, it is all bent up. I don't even know where some of them are. I don't even know where most of them are. All I know is about that one, and I don't know. But anyway, that's pretty much about it for this model. I mean, she's a really good model. Really well made, too. Um, let's go ahead and pop her on the tracks. Give me a second to pick up the box. Um, let's go ahead and pop her on the tracks and uh, see how she runs. Pick up this box for a second. Okay, let me move this to the side right quick. That way I can get the tripod set up. And uh, I will have her pull um, the Hornby Mark III. Um passenger coach get this situated sorry about all the shakiness guys um just give me like not even two minutes like actually just like what five more seconds and then you know probably less than five seconds I mean I'm done already so there you go 
And now we are going to go ahead and lower this. Again, sorry about the shakiness. There we go. Um, let's go ahead and pull this in a little bit more. Uh, and lower this again. One more time. There we go. Ah, there we are. Alrighty. Let's put her on the tracks. She is not, again, I think I said this before, but she is not DCC fitted. Um, but she's still a great model. And if I do recommend, if you get one of these models, to put the tender on before you put her on the tracks, because she can be a pain in the butt if not done like this. Um, and just for the heck of it, you know, for the heck of it, I have little coal bunkers laying around the layout, you know, and the coal I bought off of eBay. Not real coal, just fake coal, but, you know, and just, a, oh, one little piece wanted to not go in. Okay, there we go. Um, now doesn't that look way more realistic than the fake coal that Hornby puts on them? Doesn't that look way more realistic, people? Come on now. Looks way more realistic if you ask me. Alrighty. Let's oh sorry about the finger. Let's get her to back up onto our onto her coaches. Give me a second to pour some more of my drink. And I don't feel too well today. For some reason my stomach's just like eh. I got gas. Sorry about the too much information right there um coaches is on the track coaches on the track um loco is on the track let's go ahead and get her running boom reverse direction mm -hmm. reverse direction <whistles> slowly back up onto her coaches that wasn't too slow <laughs> that wasn't the locomotive's fault that was mine um now let's get her to go ahead and start off <whistles> sorry guys i have to i mean just look at that linkage though i mean look at that look at that linkage man it's just so beautiful Now, if you did notice, the um, valve gear rod, connecting rod on the other side, on, you know, the side of the locomotive that was, you know, facing us when she was sitting right here, um, has a little bit more of a rotation to it than the one on the other side. Um, I think that was because of a situation that happened a long time ago. But, um, you know, as you can see, that connecting... Oh, never mind. But if you look... It has a little bit more of a spin to it, you see? I find that looks a little bit better, but I can always just adjust that just by doing that. Believe it or not. Oh, wait, you guys didn't see it, sorry. Let me back her up. You see? It's weird. I can ju adjust it just by doing this kind of motion. Oh, and not to mention, I just noticed the gear screw is a little loose. Let's give her a quick fix. And find that little tool. It was the tool that I usually use to uh, work on the rods on my Hornby Live Steam Golden Fleece. Um, let me go ahead and find that little tool. Found it. Um, and give those rods a quick tighten because I did run her on the small um, little temporary layout I have. Um, at me and my fiance Kayla's apartment um, You know she likes trains. I like trains, you know, we like to run them So, you know, I just decided to bring one of my locomotives home And let's give her a little tighten let me hold this in place. Oh Hello spider um, Give me a second Bye bye spider Good he did just make sure um, just make damn sure. 
drill bit him. Cool. Diamond drill bit, trust me. That thing ain't damaged. Oh, that's a small end I'm using. Okay. Now let's give this rod a Titan, shall we? There we are. She's all better now. Now, let's see how she runs. Let me back her up. Whoa, shoot. That was crazy. Dead zone. Well, Jesus, man. Sorry, you guys are having to witness something like this. I've never had this kind of problem with her before. Let me uh, go ahead and do... Hold on, guys. Let me go ahead and take her off the rails just for a second. As you can see, this rod right here is loose. It's normally not loose like that. So she will have to be tightened up just right quick. There we go. Give her a quick test run without the tender. Just to see how she works. Uh, let me zoom this out. Okay. On. Let's see how she goes now. Oh, yeah. Way better. Oh, yeah. Way better. A lot better. Note to self. Never mess with that again. Like, ever. As you can see, I'm already having trouble trying to put it on the thing here. Just by having it on the track. Oh, look. One of my little guys fell. You been drinking on the job again, man. You been drinking on the job again, Phil. All right, now let's see how she runs. All right, now let's get her running at a good, fair speed. Running pretty well. Um, I see no problem with the connecting rod, as far as I can tell. Nope, no problem at all. She's fixed. Simple fix. Simple, simple fix. And there we go. Running smoothly. Now I'm not going to take her any faster than this because if I do, she's going to fly off at warp 10. Or derail. And I don't want all that coal spilt out all over the place. But she's a good model. She served me well. Still does. Beautiful too. Alright, now let's slow her down. Look at that slow running. Oh. Dead zone. As you can tell. Anyway, now let's bring her down. Eh. Tracks must need to be cleaned a little bit again. And I must need to clean her contacts. I did clean her actual, you know, the un like her actual wheels that touch the track. Like the actual part of the wheels that touch the track and behind the wheels. Um, where the contact touches but the one thing I didn't clean was the actual contact itself so I'm gonna need to do that to her and uh, I have given the locomotive the name of die not die as in someone killing somebody um, I think it's spelled D Y E the type of die I'm talking about like a name Huh. Oh, my little driver came loose that was sticking his head out the cab. Oh, well. I'm guessing he looks okay looking out this little window right here. <laughs> anyway. Um, let me go ahead and get her started again. I'll give you guys some really cool fly-by running shots. 
Let's get her going. And here she comes. And it's like if you feel the rails, you can feel the rumble she leaves. Especially when she gets really close. Look at that. Oh, I love that rumble. That's as close as a rumble as you're going to get. Um, to a steam, When it comes to a steam locomotive thundering down the tracks, passing by you. When you're standing by the tracks. At high speed. And the locomotive's passing by at high speed. Yada, yada, yada. Um, but yeah, I mean, she's a freaking great locomotive. I mean... I mean, she's just awesome. She really is. She's awesome. There she comes. Beautiful. Beautiful locomotive. Let's get another shot. How about we get a mountain view? Through the trees. That'd be nice. Yeah. Um, can't do a station view yet because I don't have the proper equipment for that. Um, but let's get a view over right here. Actually, yeah, we can get a station view. Look. Right here. Awesome. Now let's get another view. I love doing this kind of stuff on camera. It's so fun. Let's get another view. We're coming right out the tunnel. There she comes. Let's get a quick view of her going straight into the tunnel. Hold on, let me move that. Let's get a roadside view. Gotta love it. But yeah, that's uh, that's die. Running around the layout at almost warp ten. Trust me, she's going a lot faster than what she looks. She moves pretty quick. And the remote's only on what? About what? Uh, about 53, 54 maybe? Because I know right here, the middle dash right here is 55. So, the big dash right here is 55. Let's bring her up to about... 60. See what she looks like then. Still moving. Like crazy. Let's get a shot of that. That wasn't a very good one. Shall we try that again? Gotta love it. Anyway. Thanks guys for watching. And um... Please comment, rate, um, and subscribe if you'd like to subscribe. If not, I totally understand. Anyway, thanks guys, and uh, catch you guys later. Look out for part six. Bye.